Marsh introduces Songs of Praise. Gracie Fields did it, Jane Mansfield did it, even Red Rum's done it, and I've always wanted to do it. Gentlemen, welcome to Songs of Praise and Blackpool's magnificent Tower Ballroom with Phil Kelso at the mighty Wurlitzer Organ. Yeah, great, isn't it? Norman Bart, how long have you been ringmaster here? For 27 years, very happy years in Blackpool. Now, the season's finished now, hasn't it? You're all, you're all slumbering. Oh, I wish we were slumbering. <laughs> <laughs> so all these people here all live in Blackpool? Well, the majority of people do, yes, of course. Isn't it nice to come out when it's not all full of tourists? <laughs> we used to go to Bispam, the select end. Oh, sorry. And um, this is me on top, not the one under me. <laughs> <laughs> We've got traditional and a few new arrangements tonight, but we couldn't come to Blackpool being songs of praise without playing the tune that is Blackpool. Special words put to this by Barry Rose. So what tune could it be other than I do like to be beside the seaside? So all I have to say now is play it again, Phil. <laughs> A trained musician with perfect pitch 
Liz Seville used to own a nightclub in the town and she still likes to do a spot of singing at the Music Hall Tavern. The people who go there, particularly the holiday makers, are the same people who would go to church. And I see them, if I've been singing on a Saturday night, I see them in church on Sunday, which is really very nice. To me, it's a form of witness. Liz was a widow when she met her second husband, but it was a marriage which ended in divorce. People who don't go to church think that these things don't happen to people who do. People who go to church don't get divorced. People who go to church don't have problems. Um, but of course they do. I wanted to preserve the marriage. I wanted to stay married. And uh, I found through my talks with, with the vicar and, and the curate and my friends at church and their understanding and their patience because I kept changing my mind. I sort of went in full of resolve and came out going to try again. Um, and having gone through all that, I now feel perfectly calm about the whole thing. I'm still very sad. I can still get very upset about it. But I know that it is the right thing. With that emphasis on the importance of marriage, did you find it difficult being a member of the Mothers' Union? We had the Deanery Festival at St John's uh, fairly recently, before my divorce. And um, the bishop asked the members of the Mothers' Union to stand and repeat the, aim, the five aims of the Mothers' Union. And I found that extremely difficult. And then I realised that it's the family part of the marriage as well, not just being married. Um, and I am now getting my own family back, whereas before they couldn't come to the house because unfortunately my husband was an alcoholic so we never knew how he was going to be so the children particularly the babies couldn't come and stay because we didn't know what state he was going to be in well look i know that you're always asked yourself to sing songs for other people but it's your chance to choose a hymn that you want to hear to sing i would very much like oh love that would not let me go looking at the words um i find them very suitable for my divorce state um, I can now lean back on the love that I know is there um, and get a great deal of strength and succor from it. right in the centre of Blackpool. On the seafront there's lots of hotels and small guest houses and boarding houses so we see lots of holiday makers during the season but then we come back uh, a little bit further to folk sometimes in DSS hotels. Thank you very much. What do you see as the main problems with your job? I think w one of the difficulties is finding enough time for people. We we want to provide a good service and we want to provide time for folk um, but as you can understand the more time you provide for folk the less folk you can see i think sometimes when people are confiding quite good. difficult quite uh, problems that they've had and you're helping them through them you end up feeling quite shattered yourself um, 
and it's it's good to be able to to go back and meet with other Christians and sort of take strength from from their faith. Now in your church you have a healing service with the laying on of hands. How do you fit in as a GP with that kind of thing? I see healing as as it were as an arch. One side of it is what we can learn about the body and how we can help people. The other side of it is the spiritual side of it and the laying on of hands there. And I think in church that's the right place for it. The surgery isn't. People come to see me as a professional in the surgery um, to use the skills that I've learned at medical school. Um, so I'd, I, I keep them separate. The hymn I've chosen is And Can It Be? because it represents for me when I first became a Christian and as I prayed my little prayer, um, it was as if the light was coming into the dungeon. And that always reminds me of that and that wonderful sense of God with us. With such a family tradition in the Salvation Army, was it a foregone conclusion that you'd also become a member? Well, I mean, you already are an established member of the Army through the junior sections of the Corps, but at 16 you have to make a decision to enter the, the senior sections, and that certainly takes a great deal of thought and a great deal of prayer before you actually become committed to being a uniformed Salvationist. What made you decide to do it? Well, I felt certainly that the Lord was leading me that way. That was something that's very important to me. And I felt that that was the right thing for me to do at the time. Now, you're singing for us tonight, accompanied by your husband. What, what are you singing? Uh, we're singing a song called The Road Is Long. And that actually came about five or six years ago, I wrote that song, from a very personal experience. I felt quite a spiritual low at that time. I felt as though I was drifting a long way away from God. And writing music has always helped me to work out my feelings and that song certainly did that for me, so it's very much a personal song.
There's no shortage of, of cafes in Blackpool, as you'd expect, but this one's a bit special. It's called CJ's, and it's run by the Street Life Trust. The man who knows what that is is Tim Murphy. What is it then, the Street Life Trust, Tim? The Trust is an ecumenical youth project. It's run by the town centre churches, and we work with young people who are at risk in the town centre. A lot of young people do get uh, part-time work in Blackpool, and they're used to then having money. And then come the close of the season, there's nowhere open for them to go, nowhere where they can go and call their own. We open four nights of the week to young people as a drop-in cafe one night a week for under 18s. We've got a night shelter for homeless 16, 17 year olds where they can spend three consecutive nights um, while they sort themselves out. People who are kicked out from home for whatever reason um, can come in, they can wash their clothes, they can have a shower, they can clean themselves up ready for the interview for youth training or whatever they're going to, to look for in terms of employment. Now what about you? You were trained to be a priest. When I was about 1920, I wanted to become a priest. I thought that was the only way to minister to, to people, really. Uh, and it took me quite a long time to get over that. I spent two years in, in seminary. Uh, I left seminary, trained to be a youth worker, and now I'm beginning to realise that perhaps there's other ways of ministering to young people. Are you glad you didn't become a priest? I was always told I would uh, one day realise that it was better, and I'm beginning to come round to that, that viewpoint now, yes. Married with, uh, I've had four children, so uh, it's a different way of life for me. Blackpool's Pleasure Beach, this panoply of big dippers and wild mice and merry-go-rounds and things. An odd place to find a vicar, isn't it? I think a lot of people think it is, yes, but I mean really if you see it as being no different than a parish. Are you always taken seriously? <laughs> Some of the time, but not always. I, mean, I can think of one example, it's one of the first times that I walked into the um, club on, on, on the beach uh, for, for the, those who work here. And I walked in, there was a girl on the telephone, and she stopped talking to her friend and said, hang on, I'll have to go because a strippy vicar has just come in. <laughs> and I said, no, it's all right, dear, you can stay on the phone because there's no way that I'm going to go in there and take anything off. <laughs> what sort of unusual things do you get asked to do here? One of the recent things that we did was we had a, a, a wedding in my own church at St Christopher's, but the couple came down here to have their marriage blessed on the Grand National the racing roller coaster. What on earth for? Well, the bridegroom is the founder member of the uh, English Ro Roller Coasters Enthusiast Club. And he and his bride decided, that because that was really their joint passion together of roller coasters, that they would rather like the marriage to have that affirmation of their joint life. And so they came down here and we did it. 
Now, some people might see this as a bit frivolous. Do you think it's important that the church plays a part in something like the Pleasure Beach? I think right, because if we take seriously, you know, that great thing of the incarnation, that God became man in Christ, and therefore every part of our life has got something to say very positively about where God is. Well, it's changed a bit in the 30 years since I used to come and ride the donkeys on the beach, but not necessarily for the worse. And as the illuminations go out and the season draws to its close, I suppose that's when a lot of folk would say Blackpool loses its heart. But it strikes me from talking to the people who live here and work here that far from losing its heart in winter, that's when Blackpool discovers it.
Father, we thank you for the many different gifts you give us to use in the work of your church. Send us your Holy Spirit so that we may have wisdom, courage and power to do your will in our lives. Dear Father, thank you for giving us, through your Son, that love which never lets go, which lifts us from despair and shields us from all that harms us. Make us worthy of that love and teach us how to accept it. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. That's it from this Songs of Praise from Blackpool's Tower Ballroom. Next week, Martin Bashir brings the programme to you from Belfast. But what could we close with from Blackpool other than a song that would remind you of all your happy holidays here? Oh, happy day.